21-year-old male BP 140 over 90, fever 101. Called it in himself, but could hardly breathe by the time we got there. Please. Sir, I need you to just relax. Listen to just me. Try to relax, okay? Listen to me. All right, let's start a NEB treatment and get 125 milligrams on your Metro IV. Okay, got it. And ABG gets ice water. All right, let's transfer them on my count. Ready? One, two, three. Get out. Let's get that NEB treatment. Coming up. How is this, Dad? Just try to relax, sir. All right, I need you to take a deep breath for me, okay? There you go. If you have any family, we should notify. No, I need, I need to speak to Sharon. Deep breath. I need to speak to Sharon. Relax, Sharon. relax. Take this McGee. in. McGee. What did he say? Something about a Sharon? McGee, he take said me. That's Goodwin's maiden name. Now, now my belly, my belly, my belly is on fire. It's on fire. Okay, okay. Help! Oh! Oh! Well, God. He's got a rash. Oh! It feels. Oh God! It feels like something's alive in there. Oh, oh, oh. It's not a rash. Oh God! Those are worms. How did I get worms? Have you traveled recently to any underdeveloped countries? Anywhere tropical? The south of France is as tropical as I've gotten in the past 20 years. What about before that? You said you served with Stars and Stripes. Did you do any time in country? I was with the 7th Cab when they took Corn Tree. What, does that have something to do with this? What aren't they telling me? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I want to get a stool sample, see what the labs say. Yeah, just try to rest, Mr. Dixon. We'll be back soon. So, what were you driving at in there? I think we're looking at a parasitic roundworm called Strongyloides. Seen a bunch of cases at the VA. I'm guessing he picked it up in Vietnam. But that was over 40 years ago. The worms embed themselves in the intestinal wall and can remain dormant for decades. And the steroids he was on to treat his colitis must have suppressed his immune system, allowing the larvae to proliferate. So we put him on an anti-parasitic. That should clear him up, right? The worms have reached the surface of his skin. I'd say he's in a hyperinfective state. Miss Goodwin, I'm sorry, but most patients don't survive this. I don't want you two throwing in the towel before we've even started. Miss Goodwin, we're just presenting our medical opinion. I don't want your opinion. I want you to keep them alive. Sharon. Reggie. Reggie. I can't. I need some help in here. BP's diving. What happened? Gastric hemorrhage. Let's get him on the rapid transfuser. Two of red cells, two of plasma, and a five pack of platelets. I need an NG tube. Got it. Here, Nat. PPI drip, vasopressin, and paste GI. We need to get control of this bleed. On it. GI's got his bleeding under control, but his sats are down to 88. His lungs are deteriorating. So what now? We'll see how he responds to the inhaled nitric oxide. He's on a PEEP of 10. There's still room to increase. If his sats don't improve, we might consider a paralytic drip. So we do still have some options. Why don't we put him on ECMO? Oh, I, I don't want to speak for Dr. Choi, but while putting him on ECMO might protect his lungs, it wouldn't be addressing the inflammation affecting the rest of his organs. I agree. ECMO might buy us a little time, but it won't help him fight off the hyperinfection. So you're against it, both of you? Yeah. That's right. 
see what else you can come up with. It'll be nice to get ahead of this thing instead of always playing from behind. Move him like that. If you want him more upright, adjust the bed. I'm sorry, Miss Collins. I'll do it myself. I'm gonna go check on the latest book, I've never seen a good one like this before. Nat, all I know is that when Sharon was graduating from high school, Reggie came back from Nam. They practically spent the entire summer together. It was her first real love. So why didn't it work out? Well, Reggie wanted her to travel the world with him, but Sharon was going to college in the fall, and then Bert came along, and there was just... If you had listened to me earlier, we wouldn't be out of options. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gilwin. What's going on? The infiltrates in Reggie's lungs. Complete whiteout. They're barely functioning. So what do we do now? Miss Kidwin, the condition his lungs are in, there's very little hope for recovery. We should try to make him comfortable. What about ECMO? I'm afraid all ECMO will do is delay the inevitable. I have been listening to your advice all day. And look where we are. Miss Kidwin, all due respect, both Dr. Manning and I are telling you that it isn't gonna help. Your concerns are noted, Dr. Choi. Put him on ECMO. I can assign this case to another doctor, if you Sharon. prefer. We'll do it. What? We will put Reggie on ECMO. Call up to the ICU. I'll take care of the arrangements myself. Knew it wouldn't help, and so did you. I figured we had safety in numbers. I know. But if we'd had an alternative plan to save his life, yeah, I would have held firm with you. But we didn't. So we tried the Hail Mary. And Goodwin knows that we did everything we could for her. For her? Goodwin's not our patient, Reggie is. Right now he's suffering. The best thing we could have done for him to let him die with dignity. Miss Goodman? You're here to tell me my options. I just wanted to know if you needed anything. No. I'm fine. What is it about first love that just sticks with you? It's like, it's like those last 40 years don't even exist. One day he's saying goodbye to me and the next he's showing up here on a gurney. <laughs> Reggie Dixon. These machines aren't gonna save him. <laughs>